Hello, lads and lassies. Today we're talking about $5 variants. It doesn't matter if it's in a secret layer or if it's in the new master set. Cards that are special, there's just so many of them these days, and so they've started to bottom out and they have got to the $5 range. We're talking about a bunch of new cards. We've got some oldies on here. These are cards that are not regular printings. We're talking about variants today at the $5 level. Big thanks to our patrons. Our patrons are um, extremely attractive. They have uh, nice uh, butts. I shouldn't have said that. Let's not talk about the patrons' butts. Today, it's just talking about magic. But thanks to our patrons, they're very attractive. Use the TCG link, save a cat. There's a baby that looks like Joel. We have got 23 cards. Lately, we have been posting some videos that y'all have been liking. The $10 variants, the $1 variants. Well, we're here with a varied version of that, a variant, if you will, which is the $5 variants that we like. 23 cards, Jake. You ready <laughs> to get through this? You're going to be able to handle I it? I am. I was... I was thinking about calling this skull clump and then I was like that is way too funny to me and then I started laughing <laughs> at that and then I was like I gotta get this out of my system and so skull now clump. it's, it's just kind had to of say out I gotta kind of I just have system. to get this out of my system it's skull almost, clump it's pretty much out doesn't really apply it full it feels fun to say it sounds weird <laughs> to hear it doesn't really right. apply to the art but skull clump exactly there you go that's right all right, um, we've dissected that. I feel good now. We can talk about this card. It's a good card. I mean, it's a top tier commander card. You're going to notice that yep. most of the cards on this list are upper echelon commander carts. Um, we are starting here with crazy looking skull clamp. There's a good number of variants of skull clamp at this point. Good number of printings. But the Warhammer one particularly makes it seem pretty brutal yeah if you want like a weird kind of floating brain thing that kind of reminds me of like mother brain from super metroid if anybody remembers that this is a card that's really strong it's got some weird glowing red eyes and then we also have a card monologue tax one white two other for an enchantment whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn you create a treasure token so if you have that one player in your meta that is always casting multiple spells and in commander you're gonna have a lot of people that want to play multiple things and so this card is going to have a nice kickback. This was a card that when it came out was extremely, extremely hyped. People were like, oh, it's, you know, Smothering Tithe Light. It plays really well alongside exploded. Smothering Tithe. This Risk card Study. exploded yeah. out of the gate. And now it's really like the you see kind of like the power creep and just how refined commander decks are that a lot of the time they don't have you know space for this but this is a card definitely worth considering around the five dollar price point if you have not you know got it in your collection yet right meow is a really good time to pick this up i think this cart being down to five dollars from where it premiered uh especially for the borderless version meow you got to look for these borderless versions because they are going to be most often cheaper than the standard border version so if you like this version you can get a cheaper one or if you don't mind it typically you can get cheaper versions of these of the extended carts than you can of the regular border carts so just something to look out for jake and this is another treatment that yeah i'm i'm in love card, with this dude. lately this is a great card and it's a etched treatment this came out of the recent commander master set which brought us reprints of tons of stuff. And so this is one of those cards that really helps you just kind of assemble your combo and win the game. We like winning the game. It costs seven to essentially win the game here. And if you like winning the game, I would suggest tooth and nail. Yeah, right here in Meow is when you gotta win this one. If you're playing this card, you really want it to stick your victory con. And it's, I mean, it was a huge win con then. It's a huge win con now. So I really like this card. And uh, talking about these etched treatments, Jake, the artifacts are some of the best looking ones that you can possibly get right now. This one I just had to put on the list because I just love Gilded Lotus so much. I know a lot of people don't like this mana rock, but this is one for me that if you are the kind of person who likes big mana, fast mana, you already have your signets, you already have your soul ring and all of the normal two cost mana rocks and below, but you need something a little bit more up top. I like stuff like Grand Dynamo and Gilded Lotus. 
So this is a card that if you don't have this card, maybe you like the etched version. This is a fun card for around five bucks. Now, remember, these are all five dollars. All of these cards are within five bucks. Keep that That's in right. mind as we're going through this list. The whole set where we had black and white this monster card. movie cards in it, everybody just kind of crapped on it. No one wanted the cards. No one wanted any of the theme. It was just the same cards repackaged. But I still hold that we got some excellent treatments out of it, especially ones where I look in the word horror is in the name. This is perfect for it. This is down to a $5 card. This is another one where when it premiered, when it came out of the gate, it was way more. People were way more hyped on it. The hype train that falls flash, off. Man. The anger. Very strong card, though. Right. I mean, it's just, this is a brutal commander card. So at five bucks to get you a really strong horror and it's in an excellent treatment. I think that this is one of my favorite that I could pull for the list. This would look so good with like a, a blue neon signature on it. This card, oh, I mean, yeah. that it's just the way that these look. And a lot of people did kind of think of this as an afterthought. It felt like these were just like a budget way of them just making some more money. And even if that's exactly what it was, it did bring us some interesting variants. Some good variants. That's exactly right. Jake, I put this one on the list. This is around five bucks compared to a cheap card. This one is a, a variant that is more expensive than the base card. So don't think yep. that we're saying these are the cheapest available copies of these. Some of these are just like dollar cards, like braids that have a cool treatment. And this is that treatment. I, the art here is just perfecto to me. And I'm telling you, you, I'm, spe I'm speaking directly to you that is listening right now. You're underestimating this card. You're sleeping on this card. If you properly are navigating how strong this card is you're underestimating this card this that, is one of the few cards that have value from dominaria united yes what it's worth five dollars for the stained glass treatment of this and these four skulls outlining all of these braids uh, it's just this is such a good piece and the card is good dude it is this card i've seen kick ass you got to stop underestimating this card but around five bucks if I was going to get a copy it's of Braids from Undead. Card. Oh, this dude. cleans things up, man. This well, and it keeps it symmetrical and you can play around radar. it. And... It's not yeah. one that's going to eat a removal. And if it does, mm -hmm. you're like fine. But you're building it into a deck where you're sacrificing stuff is good for you anyway. And you're forcing some decisions. And if they're not okay, I'll bleed you for two and I'll draw a card. Boom. Moving on. Yeah. And that's yeah. each opponent. For each opponent. If they don't, if none of them do, you get to draw three cards and pass wow pretty good and it happens the turn it comes out anyway this isn't about how good braids is. this is about how good this art is i like this version of braids jake i've talked about these a little bit on the channel but these companions in the multiversal treatment are just so sick and since i'm in my reanimator era i picked the reanimator companion to uh be representative this whole cycle is around five dollars some a little more some a little less there's a couple right at but this Garuda is right at five bucks. And I love this frame. I love this art. I can't wait to go back to Ikoria. Yeah, dude, the Multiverse Legend slot, that was such a really cool experience. Just kind of like this, almost like Infinity War of Magic yeah. the Gathering characters that brought tons and tons of different dynamic variants from all the different planes that we had visited recently these ones came out of there and these are a throwback to kind of the ikoria variants that came out in um well ikoria yeah and so yeah this looks really cool and i like it i love the art it pops it's super vibrant i'm into it yeah really banger art like zepper said I also picked this uh look you're gonna have to google what the card what the text all is and that's just gonna be a thing i think more and more in in mtg even but this is at five dollars y'all and i'm telling you this this in the right deck anything to do with plus one plus one counters anything to do with counters in general planeswalkers if you want more counters you should run this card it's good it drops at five and two life and it's proliferating you're drawing cards you're also turning things into treasures 
And if you want the Phyrexian version in the Phyrexian foiling that had the Phyrexian symbol all over it. This is the step and complete foil here that you're looking at, folks. So step and complete. this was like the big, this was the big pimp over the top version of this set. This card would have come out and probably debuted at 20 plus dollars, just being conservative, maybe even 25 or more. Easy. In that foil version. And now we're so far from that set that people have really just moved on from it. And so when you take that into account, uh, this is probably at a, a safe place for pickup if this is a card that's been on your radar. Right. That's what I'm saying. Very low risk compared to when these cards first come out. And this is kind of across the board for how most magic sets work these days. Yeah, seriously. If you want a very Phyrexian card, here's a very Phyrexian card for just $5. And then I'm going to throw it back a little bit, Jake. Yeah. yeah, look at this. It, it, going from a card that is really hard to read and you're going to have to Google it to yeah. a card where the fact that it's textless doesn't matter. This was uh, one of the 2010 player rewards. There used to be this thing in MTG, if you if you uh, have just started play, playing recently, where you could report via your DCI number how many tournaments and Friday Night Magics and stuff that you went to. And once you got to certain achievements, five tournaments, 10 tournaments, whatever, you would get sent promos in the mail. This, there's another one of those that actually appears on this list as well that Jake and I both, uh, we pulled our lists separately. It's how we normally make these videos is we pull our lists separately and then cross them and then eliminate the duels. Uh, the other one that's on this list was one of our dual picks. We both picked it independently. But Day of Judgment, 2010 Magic Player Reward, you know what this says. It says destroy all creatures. White, white too. That you don't need anything else. And having that full blast dodge just enormous bolt from heaven down onto the ground. This is just such a cool version of a card that... For five bucks, you're like, I'm going to full art day of judgment. <laughs> right. And it's an old card, but it's surprising when you go in there and you see a card like this. It's just such a staple. That's only five dollars, which what, is why it's on the list. That's what I'm saying. You you go through these lists and oh, look, speak of the devil. And here it is. Yeah. Sight and blood. Now, this one you could see from the bottom left here is actually from a recent list inclusion. Yes. So this is a card that is that looks exactly like an old card it was originally a 20 20 10 20 2009 player reward um yep but again cards that the text is seared in our brains let's go full art on those dude huge fan i of love this card this is just such a good commander card as well some people will will run it alongside knight's whisper yeah and so this for me is just like a staple you can also use it at the end if someone's within, you know, range. You can damage an opponent for two to kill them. <laughs> yeah. In so a pinch, it is a shock, right? <laughs> In a pinch, it's a sorcery Player speed shock. shock for two black. <laughs> yeah. That's right. But it's a, it's a really cool card. And if you don't have this card, it was recently printed on the list, which probably brought the price down of those previous versions. It has a lot of different stuff. It has mystical archive versions, but this is one of my favorites. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and it fits really well, Jake, in like commander decks where everything is a special card like that's my dahada deck every yeah. legend in here is i want to try and get it in the frame of its home plane and all of the special cards or all of the uh, sorcery sorry sorry and instance cards like that i want to they can't be the base copy that's my rule for them and so this is exactly the kind of card that i would pick up for it that makes the deck. List. yeah exactly yeah. it makes a premium commander deck list just because it's that cool version I threw this one on here because I was surprised it was a $5 card. This card this made was waves. This big card. Yeah. yeah. When this card was announced, it was the the big talk of the town, all of the bears here in the here in the hot tub together. Um, and so I had to toss this one on the list when I saw it was down to a five buck card. If you want to get a scape of a bunch of bears all chilling, here you go. This is down to five dollars. A little bit of info on this one here when yeah. this card came out debuted at 30 and then it uh dropped down to around a 20 dollar level for a very brief amount of time around september of 2022 and then you had it kind of trend around 10 dollars for a little while before coming down to this five dollar range and it has been now for 
almost a year in November. It will be a year that this card has been about five bucks, meaning we're probably at the floor on this. We're not going to see much more of a downturn in this card. If it's been on your radar and you don't have it, we're at a low risk price. These secret layer cards, it, we've been told, we've been promised that they'll never be reprinted in the same way, same art, same treatment, whatever. And so Jake talking about the bottom on this one, yeah. I think that that is very real. It's a, it's a miniature reserve list, pseudo reserve list card here. And so, yeah, if it's something that interests you, pick it up. Um, I put this one on the list because I want to yell touchdown. I love the <laughs> fact that America, baby, this is just the most USA card that you can possibly find. And if you win, you literally get to yell touchdown and it's you winning the game. It's so on flavor. Um, this is one I was surprised that it had gotten down to five bucks because out of that list, uh, the set, the secret layer that this came in, it was one of the ones where I thought I was like, okay, that one could actually be expensive one day because it's a, a win con. I know the can, the card itself is not that expensive of a single, but touchdown, surely. But no, five dollars, and you can scream touchdown at a commander table when you win a game of commander. Why not? I think this card is really cool too. Uh, I love Approach of the Second Sun. I like cards that win the game. We've already talked about this before. This gets it going. And yeah, $5, it seems like also we're probably at the floor on this. Do you have the... Paglioso here, if I'm butchering the pronunciation of that name. Really great painting for this um, featuring Blood Bowl art. I just, uh, I think it's a really cool take. It's super flavorful, seven seven you gain seven life it's seven from the top it's a touchdown if you're not familiar with touchdown sports they give you seven football football medals seven football somethings for mm -hmm. uh seven, seven football, football stickers. medals i believe yeah if every time you score a, a little touchdown so pretty on on theme across the board there jake you can get a dark steel colossus for five dollars as long as you're okay with it being optimus prime i'm actually fine with that and i'm super <laughs> into it i thought this card was going to be expensive and now it shows it really does pay to wait this is a good card however it's extremely expensive right it's kind of hard to get out cost. on the battlefield talking. now it's a five dollar card so it works well with that gilded lotus we talked about earlier right correct and so yeah five dollars we've had a big adjustment to the downside it just kind of shows this is a um we really just have to wait on everything Unless it's a card that's a standout and not even Optimus is cool enough to have a high price point, folks. No, Optimus Prime. This is a flip card. The other side has Optimus untransformed in his truck form, if you will. Uh, I think that this being five bucks is a really good opportunity for people to pick up Dark Steel Colossus on the low and say that you won with Optimus Prime. It is more than meets the eye. So $5 for Optimus Prime, Dark Steel Colossus. It's a pretty good... Uh, Pretty good pickup right now if you need a big finisher. Talking about big finishers yeah. and CEDH commanders. Jake, this was the pull from that secret layer that was not that long ago. This was one of the main cards in it where it wasn't a huge value play, but it was like, wow, that card is cool. And it's a CEDH commander. Nope, this card, $5. I feel like, just came out, right? It did just come out. A... Wow. $5 for a CEDH commander or a really just not so uh, in your Boros equipment deck. If you want to put Goto and Helm of the Host up on Goto and you can go infinite and win the game. Um, five bucks. This is a fun one. Yeah. This treatment reminds me of those metal cards. I really love those treatments on the cards. It's nigh unreadable, but I do like how Goto Bandit Warlord is kind of symmetrical. I think that that's a really cool take. The All contrast cards. is really nice. I like that it's dark and yeah. like maroon and red. And then you have this kind of like orange and beige uh, Godo right in the middle. It looks cool. Yeah, this is a good one too. Actually, what is this even from? I haven't even seen this card. Secret layer. This was a secret layer. We skipped over the whole pack because we didn't want the pack. But this was a secret layer card. Nickel Bolas Dragon God. Talking about high contrast. How about black and white? line drawing pretty cool crazy like looking this. from yuki fujisawa here this was in a secret layer where nobody was like 
everybody was like i'm good not a lot of value but then when you look at it as singles after the fact you start going wow five bucks that's a cool oh, conversion so this, this. Was, this was from stores lgs okay. only secret layer interesting i remember looking well, at the cool. layer and being like i don't really care I yeah. know that we've got another LGS exclusive secret layer coming out soon that I really am into. So if you're looking for Nicol Bolas, the dragon god as a planeswalker yeah. for your planeswalker deck, this is a pretty sweet $5 version. Jake, can't ever complain yeah. about Wizard of Barge. I love this art, man. And if you play goblins, this is a goblin that you want to have in your goblin EDH deck. And so for me, easy inclusion. It's a card that stands out. It is just like, you either like this art or you don't. I do. There's a big club, the little goblin over there. This goblin goes and gets the goblin that you're looking for so that you can win with the goblin. I love it. Goblin matron. Even the uh, the power and toughness box is a little mm -hmm. goblin. I love the attention and detail here. I love that the name of the card is graffiti on the wall that they're leaning on there. I like the little, oh, yeah. the little sidekick goblin looking all tough and that sexy matron there with the spike bat. I'm a big fan. I think this is a yeah, cool man. art style. Five bucks. That is what we can That's, repeat about shout this Shout out one. to Acidic Slime, which I don't believe is on this list, no. but there was also a really cool Acidic Slime in that same, uh, same style. It's weird, but let's talk about reassembling Skeleton because when we die, we come back <laughs> as something new. <laughs> That's and, right, uh, and on a motorcycle. And that's why I like what, what they're doing here with the reassembling skeleton art. This was from a secret layer as well. A lot of the variants on this list are secret layers, but five bucks, a lot of these you don't want to spend 30 bucks on, but you're like, I do like that one card. I feel like five bucks becomes the palatable price for a special version of a card that's like 10 cents that i want specifically i feel like five bucks is a good price for that what do you think jake i think so as well this is a card that comes back again and again and especially in commander i like having a pimp version of cards like that like i like having a pimp version of an artifact like gilded lotus like we were talking about if my reassembling skeleton is something that i'm going to keep bringing back again and again it's cool to have a a cool one pimp version that's right yeah and right I want to direct everybody's attention to the flavor text on this because every single time that you bring it back, you get to go vroom from the tomb, baby. And it slides back onto the battlefield with a motorcycle. So I really think that's a relevant part of what you're paying for here with your $5. I'm a really big fan of it. Jake, you mentioned this card earlier, Knight's Whisper instead of Sign in Blood. Well, if you want a pimp version of Knight's Whisper right now, all it's going to cost you is five bucks, and it's going to have a cool Dracula vampire on it. What do you think of this one? Knight's Whisper is a great card. And like we had Sign and Blood on the list, Knight's Whisper is a great card as well. It does pretty much the same thing, except it's less mana restrictive. And it says you draw two cards and you lose two life. It doesn't say target player. So there is no get to the end of the game and use this as a sorcery speed shock to kill somebody if you need to. But... We don't really need that. This is just the, no. the, if you're playing three color, you might not want sign and blood. You right. might want night's whisper. Yeah, exactly. And having a sweet version of it is going to turn some heads much like Mesa Enchantress. I will say about this one, Jake, this is one of them that we both picked it for our, yeah. for our video here tonight. And, and I know it's, you love Enchantress decks. Oh, my favorite thing in the whole damn world. I look though at the different versions of Mesa Enchantress. Fun fact about this one, this is the only variant art for the for the card at all. This card has been printed a bunch, uh, Mesa Enchantress has, but it's only ever been printed with the exact same art. It's got that Krenko feel to it, where Krenko forever never got an alternate, and now we're finally getting one in Re Ravnica Remastered. Secret Layer brought us this alternate of Mesa Enchantress, and this is a beautiful piece. This is a beautiful card. It is a beautiful card. Yeah. You're going to have this one sitting on the battlefield for a while. Um, it is a secret layer, so I'm more hesitant to say pick up a foil. I got to say, with that white dress and that glowing yellow staff and the magic glowing around the subject there and all of the white on the borders, I would assume this in foil looks banging. Dude, I'm actually so surprised, like you were saying, that this did not get any other... No. 
treatment other than this ever i have to agree with you i think it will look really good with that with the staff and and those little spots in the background for the foiling i'm sure it does look really good yeah top tier i mean if you're gonna be the enchantress uh, enchantress player you need the card that the name was largely just like this is what we're going to call this archetype make sure you get it jake i i got all these i think i put these in a buying video end of last year maybe and mm -hmm. they've all gone down like a dollar or two even from that video but five dollar triumph five dollar triumph man if you're playing like a five color deck Maybe in, in Jund, you don't need this, right? Maybe you're like, I've got my mana base down for Jund. I don't really need Zeotaurus Proving Ground. I think you do. I think you would want it either way. But if you are playing a five color deck, you don't have this card. This is such a good pickup, in my opinion. I know the ones with blue typically do better because it was one of the most powerful colors and all of that. But this for me, this does not represent the full cycle of these this just is here as itself this one is five bucks not yeah. a bad card no Great for fixing. and look if you're playing a jund deck you definitely want this card this is the ultimate search target when you go get any target forest from your library especially on a turn one yes. you know if, if exactly. you turn one fetch land into this is a, an excellent way to start out your game yeah exactly five dollar cool variant love the uh love the whole look there a set within a set though that i really loved was the mystical archive this is growth spiral this is a excellent card for your green blue decks um and this treatment of it is just it's beautiful like the rest of these i, I you know when i look at this it's a language i don't understand how to read but i look at it for cards like sign in blood or like day of judgment where i basically know what the text is right i don't need anybody to tell me what growth spiral does i don't need to be reminded of it and if i do it's a real quick reminder if i like haven't played this deck in a long time or something but this beautiful oh yeah you can look at this text. and if you don't know right off the bat you could just really quickly google on your phone and right. it's super fast yeah and that's true it for does all get these, annoying but... if you play against somebody who has a whole bunch of and i used to do this i used to try to pimp out my decks with like japanese and russian sure, cards sure. and it was really annoying and now i have all of those cards separated <laughs> from my we we're like all right do you Jake's remember when i would that do that out. yeah it's the russian yeah deck. You, well you would and even I would... forget like instant or sorcery <laughs> dude yeah there were just like cards where i would be like oh i'm gonna use this just because it's a korean card and really like especially going into the variant era and how many new cards come out oh, these yeah. days compared to back in the day there's a big difference in playing like you know a japanese doom blade and then yeah. having like a japanese you know whatever new card came out and you don't have it memorized and it has three lines of text and it's easier to just have an english card so right. that your opponent can read it you don't have to look it up on the phone so yeah but for a card like this and especially in edh where people are trying to pimp out their decks with cool art this makes a lot of sense to me yeah exactly darth brando made a good comment that i think is applicable to the whole video chaos warp is a good one that also was in the mystical archive and the, that treatment of chaos warp looks pretty sick i will agree to that that is a really good point though if all of these sets within sets if you remember these sets within sets and you're like oh wow I remember that happening. I remember the ones I wanted being too expensive. Go back and take a look now. Yes, man. Go back and take a look at these sets within sets that you, you don't need ignored. us here. You can go back and you can take a look at these and you could be like, what happened with that mystical archive? Yes. That card really bottomed out. I all wonder if anything else did. Retro artifact reprints from Brothers War. That was another Dude. huge one. Great oh my place God. to go Mishra's look for cards. Bobbles. You could just get really good cards in all of those slots. Multiverse Legends. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And here's one that came out of Time Spiral Remastered. And this is a card that I play in Karavik the Merciless. And it has a nice suite of abilities. Typically, I use two of them, uh, which are Destroy Target Artifact and Exile All Cards from Target Player's Graveyard. Somebody's about to combo off, just Rakdos Charm them, especially if they need the yard or something like that. Now, if you are playing against tokens, if someone is going super wide, that last mode of the card sometimes ends up being very relevant. I just love this card. I like the aesthetic of this. You might be like, wait a minute, that's a retro card with kind of a high price point. It's five bucks. 
Well, the retro version of this card only came out of Time Spiral Remastered, and in that set, it was much more difficult to get retro versions of cards, which is why the price is where it is. Yep, I think that all of these retros are really cool. Uh, keep in mind that we are going to have a lot of retro stuff coming over the next two years because we are guaranteed a remastered set per year. And so far, a remastered set has 100% of the time included retro frame reprints of cards. Rakdos, that is a guild. The next reprint set is Ravnica remastered. Keep that in mind as you're making purchases over the next couple of months. All Ravnica cards are at risk of being reprinted at the beginning of next year with multiple versions and so if you're trying to go yep. buy some card that appeared in the nine one of the nine ravnica sets or on ravnica in like a commander set or something like that just keep in mind when that set comes out in context to when you want to buy um jake this set just came out but i think i know why you put this one on here this is what i'm gonna guess I don't think that you care too much about the art or the Doctor Who or any of it. I think you care that this is a $5 heroic intervention. 100% dude. Yeah, yep. dude. It's I like saw you send me heroic. this one and I was like, what the hell? And then I was like, oh, this card's only $5. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is one of those cards where, oh, first shout out Walter, 35 months. Thank you, sir. Retro from TSR cards are my guilty pleasure. I know, dude. Great that was treatment. a set. Interesting set. Heroic Intervention at five bucks. This is a dip that, in my opinion, won't last. It's one of those cards that people gravitate toward because this is your get out of jail free button. You play it alongside other get out of jail free buttons like Teferi's Protection, stuff like that. And this is just one of those, oh, somebody's about to target everything. Somebody's about to blow up the board. Well, not me. And if you put it on like an Isochron Scepter, well, wouldn't that be just the most disgusting thing that ever happened? Look, five dollars for a doctor who heroic intervention not a bad discount right now this is a ten dollar card y'all and it stands to be seen if they're just going to keep reprinting it keep reprinting it but right now there's a ten dollar card and so five dollars is a good price for it check it out yeah this one in, in my opinion aside from the art it's just like free tendies but some people do like that art and I'm sure I don't hate the art. I actually like the way that the blue pops off the card. But this is yeah, it's one. a five dollar heroic intervention. So it's it's really just like a, almost like an honorable mention. Yeah, I um, this is another one that when I see that big negative space, that big white border behind him. I'm oh, like, yeah. Foil, dude. This is going to look sick in foil because you just got that big open nothing. I think that'll be a pretty sweet foil. Those are our 23 picks for variants that we like at $5. Let us know if there's a variant on here that you really like or some card you found that you think is a really good deal because it's a variant thing. And if you didn't catch us live, you got to be here live next time. And if you think Skull Clump is a good card, let us know in the comments and let us know what we missed. It feels like it's been years since we discussed Skull Clump. <laughs> Well, Skull Clump is back, baby, and that is a brain on a noodle. Yeah, it's some kind of metal noodle that's made to look like a spine. Yeah, it's a metal noodle with a with a brain.